I want to just take a moment to show you what a geologist sees when we stop at a road cut. This is a road cut just south of Lake Michigami. Uh, I want to do a little collecting out here, but not from this particular place. But just show you, you can see more than just rocks if you know how to read them properly. If we look at this, this looks a lot like a quartzite. I believe you're supposed to find quartzites out in this area here. And if we look over here, we can see some other interesting mineralization. Let's come over here a bit. And we've got some crystals starting to appear. You notice there's not much over here and then they start to appear up this way. have some local artwork here as we come over here now the rocks are looking quite a bit different still very quartzy what we're probably seeing here quartzites are formed by the metamorphism of sandstones and what we might might be seeing is uh, compositional changes in the original sandstone creating different non quartz minerals Forming in some of these places. It's very interesting. Again, it looks almost igneous in here, except that the matrix is so quartzy. I really think this is probably a metamorphic texture, and because it, there's no sharp transition in here, it just kind of blends into it. So it tells me it's probably a change in the uh, original composition. But then now here we go. We got some interesting stuff here. There may be some intrusive igneous basically a small amount of magma a dike that came up in here certainly there's a large quartz vein that cuts through up here and quartz veins usually especially that size need a lot of hot water coming through could have been fed by some magmatic activity here that's messing things up you look over here it looks totally different over here but in fact it's more of a weathering surface because if you get a broken spot here you can see the original color again is pretty much the same if we come over here you get some quite pretty stuff here if i get my rock hammer and try to pry this little piece out or maybe this guy here something real small but even just a big big hunk of rock on the side of the road a geologist can get out and with a trained eye, we can have a look at the history of this location. Perhaps around 2 billion years ago. I believe that's around the, the age of most of these rocks in this area. Alright, so I'm on 41, west of Michigami here. Uh, important important uh, thing about parking along the side of a busy road like this is you get off the road just as far as you safely can. Don't put yourself in a ditch, but don't don't hug that that shoulder line there. It's a great way to end up sideswiped, injure, kill yourself, injure, kill another uh, driver who may be at fault for hitting you. But it doesn't matter. Just don't park dangerously. Here I pulled over to have a look at the rocks, and what we've got here is a gabbro. Look at that chunky crystalline texture there. It's a black rock. This is a basalt composition, but one that formed deep underground or underwater, usually underground. But I do know that there are pillow basalts and pillow gabbros in the area around here. Um, but I don't see any pillow structures here. So I think this is an intrusive rock. This is a basalt that didn't make it to the surface and formed what's called a gabbro. When rocks make it to the surface, they crystallize quickly. When they crystallize quickly, they have tiny microcrystals you can't see. Basalt, plain black rock, right? The slower they crystallize, the larger the crystals grow. You can actually get a sense of how long it took for uh, magma to harden based on the size of the crystals. A pegmatite with a big, large crystal structure, uh, those are very slow. Sometimes they took tens of millions of years to cool. A gabbro like this is a basalt, 
like you get all over uh, the Keweenaw area, but one that couldn't reach the surface and that crystallized over the course of eh, at least hundreds of thousands of years for a crystal size like this. Really nice. I might take a piece home. I like that, bro. I'm about a mile east of those Gabros, still on 41, still west of Michigami, and boy has the geology changed. I skipped one stop where I would have liked to look at the rocks, but there just wasn't enough room to pull over, and there's a lot of traffic. I don't want to put anyone in danger. But here, we're out of those Gabros, that's for sure, and what we have here is banded iron formation. Lots of it, beautiful. There are some gorgeous places like Jasper Knob, other spots like that where you can collect, where there's beautiful, beautiful iron formation, but don't collect there, don't ruin something gorgeous. You, all you gotta do if you want a little piece of banded iron formation, just find the right road cut. I mean, for God's sake, you can just reach down here and take whatever you want, really. No one's gonna miss this. Just make sure that, as I said previously, if you're pulling off on the side of the road, that you do it safely. Don't get yourself run over, don't get yourself fit, don't put anyone else in danger when you're doing it. But, there's all this banded iron formation all over the place. If I didn't already have a ton, I'd go nuts here collecting. Look at that. So shiny, so nice. This is recording. A period in time when bacterial life, particularly algae, had basically taken over the earth and it was destroying the environment. Now the environment at the time would have been incredibly toxic to us. It was destroying the environment by putting oxygen into the atmosphere. All these layers record pulses and activity basically. What you would have is the bacteria would proliferate, it would fill the oceans, the algae would fill the oceans. Well, we got some loud traffic. The algae would fill the oceans, they'd oxygenate the atmosphere, they would kind of kill themselves off a bit. They would disappear for a while, and then they would come back. And that's why you, you end up with this, this layering of the rocks through here. The banding in your banded iron formation. This looks like it's all hematite and specular hematite. I don't see any chert in this one. Banded iron formation usually has chert. But this one looks like it's pure hematite. You know, all just red hematite and silver specular hematite. If a road cut wants to get the attention of a geologist, all it really has to do is just have veins. Here we got some vein quartz filling this crack up here. And right away, it makes me want to stop and take a closer look. What do we have here? We got, oh, we, we may be back in the gab row here. Oh, we got some nice veins in here. I may poke around for a few seconds. Alright, so we got the Gabros over here. But as we walk over here, it transitions a bit. We don't get those big chunky textures anymore. Now we're getting more of a finer crystal. That's telling me this is crystallized much faster. I believe we transition over here into basalts. This may have been where I was once shown uh, some pillow basalt structures. Um, and the pillow basalts actually form underwater. Those are um, under the ocean volcanic eruptions. Now, I don't see any pillow structures obvious here, but I am looking at rocks that are typical of these underwater eruptions. Uh, is fine-grained, not 
as fine as a surface eruption, but pretty, pretty fine grained. What this is also showing me is that these rocks are repeating. If we were coming from the west to the east, we went from Gabbro to Basalt to Banded Iron Formation, back to Basalt and then to Gabbro. And what that's telling me is that these rocks are folded. Very likely the Banded Iron Formation is the youngest stuff. Not entirely sure on that. I can check my my history when I get home. And what that would indicate is that we've got sort of a U-shaped fold here. Even though we're going over a mountain, the shape, the, the fold itself is going to be U-shaped with oldest material on the outsides and the younger Biff in the middle. Now if I'm wrong and the Biff is the oldest, then it might be a more typical shape like so. I'll have to check that because I don't have my geologic history of this location memorized. But if memory serves me, these are the uh, underwater erupted basalts back when this used to be an ocean. And of course this used to be an ocean because we have banded iron formation back there. That always forms in the deep ocean. It doesn't form today at all, but back in the day it was always deep ocean. All right, if memory serves me correctly, this is where we get the pillow lavas, the pillow basalts, the underwater lava flows. And they tend to form what are called basalt pillows, and they tend to be tubes of basalt, of lava rock, that form and quickly harden, and they just stack on top of each other and grow. And I may be mistaken, but I believe this is one of those pillows right here. Really nicely illustrated pillow shape coming around there. And these pillow lavas stack on top of each other and just grow and grow. The base of every major volcanic island is basically made of these. Uh, the bottom of all your Hawaiian volcanoes just stacks and stacks of pillow lavas. There's a lot of iron staining on this. Obviously there's a lot of iron rocks in the area. Not entirely sure what we're looking at here. What have we got here? This is interesting. To be honest, I don't I don't know immediately what I'm looking at here. But yeah, these are the, the pillow lava flows. They're underwater volcanic eruption. That hole, by the way, is not natural. That's man-made. That was part of uh, the blasting for the road cut here. I've parked far away here only because we're next to a construction zone. I don't want my car obstructing anyone's view of what they're getting into. Well, I'm still on 41. I'm actually in Michigami over here. Maybe not Michigami proper, but close enough to call it Michigami. And what we have here, we have a whole bunch of these very shiny schists. And inside, look at all of those garnets. Now based on what I know of the area, these are likely tiny storolites, but they may be something different. I'm not entirely certain. If I climb up here a bit, we might see some nice stuff. What you get here sometimes are these wavy patterns. These wave patterns, those are called crenulations. This is a crenulated garnet schist, possibly storolite schist. Storolite is a variety of garnet. And I'm at outcropping of slates. I'll show you what they look like up close. Like so they can be pretty massive. But really, when they break apart, they're very platy. Slate is what your uh, pool table 
surface is made of underneath your uh, underneath the, the felt uh, because it tends to be so perfectly uniformly flat and hard makes perfect pool table material you can see a whole pile of broken slate right down here and it does its forms this slate is one of the uh, earliest forms of metamorphism you get a siltstone or eh, not a siltstone, a shale really a shale is already a little bit platy then it starts to metamorphose and it becomes a slate and then it goes on to a schist and then a nice but uh yeah so if uh, you find something that's extremely platy like this what you might be handling is a slate that cameras don't like to focus on apparently there we go just doesn't like to look at it sideways yeah i'll tell you what uh <laughs> if you can find a beach with slate on it like this these are the hands down best skipping stones you will ever find fantastic skipping stones <laughs> but yeah slates these are the siamo slates i believe these are over a billion years old Everything out in the Marquette area is pretty old, really, though. 